Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Rolds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deeper into robots, what makes them work, and check out some really cool features here. And today I'm here with team number 5530, the Green Hills Lawnmowers from Ann Arbor, Michigan. 5530 traces her roots back to the 2015 season, where they won both the Rookie All-Star and Rookie Inspiration Award. Since then, they had a district event win and three finalist awards. In 2020, they were semi-finalists at the uh, first Michigan Jackson event, where they also won the Autonomous Award. Today I'm here with Thomas, Clara, and Ryan, and we're going to be diving deeper into this modified 2020 robot, speaking about what some of the changes are, uh, how their at-home challenges went, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Thomas, take us through on this 2020 robot here. Uh, I'd love to hear about some of the modifications that were made uh, on this robot. And of course, some of the features and capabilities. You're going to be starting out with the uh, intake. Uh, and then we'll be talking about the hopper and the turret. So let's start with the intake on this robot. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, sure. So I guess the first thing that we realized in our modifications uh, this year was that the ball jamming is really a problem. And I think for many teams, that was like the biggest problem. So when modifying our whole ball delivery system, we wanted to have as wide of an intake as possible to have, you know, when you touch a, p a game piece, you get the game piece. So we have it spanning the whole robot this year, uh, which is a little bit better than last year. And also the intake is able to feed into this hopper system, which has the, basically the problem is last year on the 2020 robot. Whenever there was a, a chance for the balls to funnel, we wanted to get rid of it. When there was a funnel, there's a chance for two balls to get into the position of one ball. And we found that that was like the key factor that prevented, uh, which like basically facilitated jamming and messed up the whole system. So to combat that, we uh, decided to choose a spin deck system. So if you want to show Tyler there, that it, it's able to house five balls fairly easily and is robust enough that even if two balls get in one position, they'll roll around each other and we can show you that later, but that's the main thing. We wanted to stop jamming, which is the biggest problem, and have a wide enough intake that we could intake balls from left all the way to right of our uh, robot. And you know, spin dexters are really cool. We're starting to see more and more of those uh, come out. Can you talk to us just a little bit more about like, it looks like you're using uh, uh, tubing on the spin dexter itself. So can you talk to us a little bit about uh, some of the materials that went into it? Uh, and then some of your experience using a spin dexter, uh, like, you know, what worked, what didn't work and how did you improve it over time? Yeah, so what we found was that we didn't really want to have the balls uh, be fully fully contacted so that there was a roller against the ball all the time. We wanted like a soft contact so that the force, uh, basically the balls wouldn't get jammed in. Because this year I think every team knows that the balls can get into a space the size of a quarter. Uh, you know. So what we wanted to do was prevent that. And the way we found to do that is to have soft material here, uh, which basically like coerces the ball there instead of shoving it uh, over. Well, and, and, as, and as we keep going too, one of the things uh, I really love hearing about on spin dexters is what uh, people use for like the kicker, what gets the power cell up into the shooter yeah, itself. Yeah. So can you detail that a little bit more? So this is what we call the gate wheel if you want to get in there. So we have a Neo 550 here driving just like a, a small two inch uh, wheel. Uh, and that basically uh, pulls it up. And Ryan, I bet you could run it right now too with feet up. So we have it basically uh, tangential to, the, to, to the, the circle, and then just pulls the ball up. So it's pretty simple, and it just prevents the ball from going up since that uh, area here is, uh, I think, compressing it two inches. So then basically the ball will never go in with the force coming from the spindexer, but only goes up when you turn that gate wheel on. 
So yeah. So how do you ensure like right. the how do you ensure that when you're intaking uh, five power cells, for example, that they're all going to land into the spot that they need to land into? Right. So uh, when five balls get in here, if you want to run it back, Ryan. A little bit more. Yeah. You can put in the fifth ball. Right. So usually what would happen is, you know, maybe like this. And then when we actually start to run our shooting function that, uh, or our shooting command, that the balls sort of fall into place uh, naturally since what happens is that that gate wheel gets rid of a ball because even if some balls are stuck here, since there's that soft tubing system for the spindexer, that last ball can move even though the rest are stuck. And then we give the robot a little jiggle, and then that basically gets everything loosened up and we can shoot uh, uh, very fast. The jiggle command is my favorite part so far on this, by the way. So. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a very technical thing. Yes. I don't think many teams have that. Got you there, Thomas. So let's, let's go into your shooter and talk a little bit more about that. I know Claire's going to come in and talk about the hood on the robot, uh, mm -hmm. on the shooter as well too, but uh, work me through the, uh, the mechanisms that you have for that. Yeah. So actually, Ryan, if you want to hand me the last year's turret. Yeah. So the biggest thing that we did to change, to basically facilitate the whole spin deck system and the intake and all of that was to make the shooter and the turret much smaller. So last year we bought this uh, uh, Armabot turret and it's, sort of, it's too big, it's just massive, right? So this year we decided to uh, try to manufacture our own turret uh, out of Delrin and it worked out pretty well. Basically, uh, we have a, uh, a bearing sandwich around it, and it's, it's a thrust bearing, a radial bearing, and another thrust bearing. And what that does is, is it rides along uh, a Delrin, uh, kind of like a bushing surface there. So if you want to spin the turret, Ryan, to just show that off. Yeah. So what we're running it with is a Neo 550 uh, over here on the... Um, just, it's, it's a basically quarter inch aluminum plate with a Delrin, uh, custom Delrin pulley ring that we cut on the X-carb. So using our machining capabilities, this year we used, as, I guess as you can tell, a lot of polycarbon Delrin, just because we found that that's a really easy machining material for us to use. Uh, so yeah, that custom turret basically shrunk the whole thing and allowed us to get it more compact and allow that spindex to happen, so yeah. How many degrees of motion are you uh, getting on that turret? And then do you mind talking a little bit about uh, what wheels you're using and the, what flywheels you have on there as well too? Sure. Yeah, so the turret, we have, you know, the, from the hood, the, the, the Y and then the X. So we have up to how much? Probably 270 degrees, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, and then for the flywheel, we're using uh, two Neo brushless motors, the big ones. Uh, not geared at all, really, and then just dri driving it with uh, a belt connected to these flywheels. And these are just six-inch, basically, uh, drivetrain wheels that work pretty well. Uh, let's keep moving on. We're going to go over to Clara, who's going to be talking about the hood uh, that's on the robot. And then, Clara, I know we'll be uh, moving into your climber as well, too, and talking a little bit more about that. So our hood system is continuous, so we can stop at any point. There's not, like, a set stop point. Um, you want to bring it over? Um, we uh, machined a gear right here, and this is just a track. And this is a seat motor. And so as that spins, it will just move the track forward and back. Um, we have the limelight actually attached to this top piece right here. So that then as the hood moves back, the limelight angle also gets adjusted, which allows us for increased accuracy as the hood position changes. Um, I just want to say, I don't think I've seen a seat motor in a long time. That's like going old school from like when I was in high school on stuff. So that's pretty cool to see uh, on a robot as well too. Uh, so on, on the uh, adjustable that you had, what did you have in 2020 then? Was it just a fixed hood shooter? Uh, no, it was pretty similar to like this exact design. Um, we just updated a lot of like the piecing so that then um, Instead of this, all of these like ridges being separate different pieces that we had to specifically space on our shaft, um, now it is just one piece, um, or I guess two pieces that makes it a lot 
easier to put together and take apart. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about your climber a little bit. Obviously, in the 2021 at-home challenges, we're not using climbers. But, hey, uh, for for those who just came out, when this is being recorded, big news. Uh, first, just released that they're going to be supporting off-season events again. So we're definitely excited about that. Uh, so love to hear uh, more about uh, your climber and how that works on your robot. So hopefully we can see that in action at some point. Okay. Um, climb system is a nesting system with a string running inside to the top. So... We have one motor driving each side, and through the wrench system, we have a wrench attached to the side here. It will both be able to drive our climb up and then pull it out once it launches out. Um, we're using, blinking on what these springs are called, constant force springs uh, to bring each stage up. And there is a string keeping the distance for the top stage. Uh, and because that keeps constant distance, as the second stage is brought up by the constant force string, uh, the third stage is brought up by the string distance being changed. So do you have and, uh, other two climber arms or just one? Uh, we have one on each side. Sure. They're identical in what we did. Um, the have only difference is that the side is changed and that one chain and that side's direct. Oh, why, why is it different uh, from each other? Just from a spacing, like where the turret is? Yeah, it's um, our turret, when it rotates to this side, would hit a motor if we had it there, whereas on that side there isn't the turret problem, so it's just direct. Sure, that makes sense. Um, so have you, uh, something I always love to ask teams that have the dual arms, have you tried climbing with just one arm before, like either by accident or by purpose in a match, and has that worked for you? Um. We did it with this system. Last year, we accidentally climbed with one of our arms. Uh, last year's arms were in kind of like a half scissor lift formation. Um, and it worked, but it did shatter the plastic that we were using. Oh, so for. Not, not, re not recommended then, huh? Not, not recommended, but we think that we could climb with these ones with one if we really needed to. Um, so. Yeah, well, Clara, well, thanks for ta talking to us more about the uh, the hood on the robot and the climb. Uh, we're going to be heading over to Ryan next, uh, who's going to be talking about uh, some of the software in the robot, of course, the sensors that go into it. Uh, so always love to hear, you know, what goes into the guts of the robot. So, Ryan, take us through some of that. Yeah, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, how we uh, had fixed the problem of, like, aiming the robot. Uh, so mechanically, we just have the limelight set up so it turns with the turret and aims where the turret is aiming, as you can see. And uh, so then the problem becomes, how do we line up the limelight with the uh, uh, target? And oh, excuse me, to do that, because uh, the problem is, because uh, we can uh, line it up in the x-axis. Thomas, do you want to do that real quick? Yeah, yeah. See, it lines up. That's like a very easy, we just take the offset of the limelight and like the up from the target and like minimize it so it's aimed directly at it on the X direction. And, and that was fairly easy. But the hard part is in the Y direction because if you're far away, you're going to want to aim it farther back so it's like more of an arc. And when it's like further up, you want to like bring it around a bit differently. You have to like, so if you go back, you know, it's up a bit more. And uh, that's that's like the big problem, you know, finding the distance to the target. And to solve that, what we did is uh, we created a log function. Uh, so we had a test, and we put the robot on like 10 or 15 spots on the floor. We all, and it was all marked. And we saw, okay, if, if we put the robot here, how far does the hood have to go back for it to go to the target? And we did that for every point. Then we made like a function that matched all those points up together. And so we just, the limelight will give us an offset from the target. We plug that into that function we generated and it'll go to that position. So it's, it means it's just continuous. It fires just as well from like any point on the floor then. So if Thomas, you just want to line it up. So it's unlined and it'll just, if you hold it, it'll find its way in the x direction, it'll use the function to find the best put offset in the y direction, and it goes in almost every single time, you know, uh, from like any distance, so we're really proud of that. 
Well, 5530, once again, the Green Hills Lawnmower is coming in from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Thanks for taking the time to speak to us about your robot. Uh, the capabilities always love hearing uh, modifications made and what you learn from them. Uh, so, of course, we hope to see this robot at uh, sometime in person. But regardless, we wish you best of luck in uh, this season and future seasons to come. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with the company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUND by joining FUND Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.